Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Voice with me, Rishi Rao, where I feature a bunch of people who I feel is interesting and you get to know them better. So if you have any questions for another person or you want me to interview anybody, go ahead and put it in the comment section and I will do my best to get them on this show. So today's guest is India's fastest inline skater. He's number five in the world and he's just 25 years old. And it is without a doubt that I'm 100% sure that soon enough he's going to be number one in the world. Speeding his way up to this interview, this is Danush Babu. During the lockdown, how how were you able to keep yourself busy? Like, uh, are you allowed to skate in the house? Uh, no, <laughs> not, not in the house, not in the house. Uh, we, we usually need at least... 100 meters or 150 meters to just roll around. Okay. I don't think house is big enough to do that. So it's a little difficult in the house, but around my neighborhood, I would, yes, but right. I wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Just me alone, just roaming around the streets and. Mm-hmm. So you're, and that's like a street I'm skater, right? Profession. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't want to do that. I, I'm into the professional. I want to be a professional in what I do. Right. So. I don't mind waiting it out. The whole world is waiting. So why, why shouldn't I? Lovely, lovely. So how did you like keep yourself occupied during the lockdown? What was your time pass? Uh, so basically we have a few off skate exercises and a few climatic exercises we use. Okay. Uh, and we do that during off season. So this is a uh, elongated off season for us. So we've been doing that for a long time. Luckily today, since uh, the gyms and other stuff were open, I thought I could go to my track and skate and I did that. Okay. It felt damn good. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you actually took the wheels out? Uh, probably in the month of April. Once the unlock, unlock 1.0 something, hmm. I went to the track and I did a few laps. I did that for a week and then people started showing up, all my students and my dad's students started showing up and I was like, let's not put the kids at risk. So risk, yeah. we shut the whole thing down. And yeah, from today we started the whole thing. Wow. Uh, did you see a lot of uh, people coming in? Yeah. A lot of people coming in. Most of the parents are frustrated because the kids are getting fat <laughs> and they're getting frustrated just by staying at home. So they want to get some activity. Right. So they're like, we want to come, we want to come. So I don't think it's a barrier for them to also come and skate because what I feel, the same thing the kids also feel. So it shouldn't be, you know, unfair saying I only I can skate and not the kids. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, you have to lead your, uh, by example, right? So, I think that's yeah, yeah. that's that's fantastic. Um, uh, how old are these kids that you're teaching right now? Uh, between four to twelve. Kids from four to sixteen or eighteen. Okay. Most of them are quad. Most of them are inline. Okay. It depends on at what level they are. I mean, at what uh you know uh, at what professional level they are if they are really right. good and they're really interested in skating or continuing skating we push them into inlines Lovely. or if they're really good at quad and uh, who are really doing really well and who are able to win national medals we push them on quad it really depends it's not like uh, you know uh, you win a medal okay fine take inline go skate it doesn't work that way <laughs> it depends right. on how how much they are capable of in different fields of uh, like cricket is actually a more commercialized uh, sport at this point right um oh yeah do you feel do you feel that you had an advantage at this point of time where you know you can focus on the skill rather than commercializing it yeah i've been doing it for a long time i was only focusing on skill only focusing on winning and you know doing it for my own passion rather than commercializing and telling it to people say like oh i won this i won that yeah. i don't want to do that because Victory speaks in itself. True. So I just want to do that from a long time, and uh, that's what I've been doing. That's true. That's right. I think you let your skating speak for you. So that's that's brilliant. That's fantastic. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have uh, traveled a lot of places. I've noticed uh, going through your Instagram uh, account. <laughs> Um, yep. you've, you've like state level, national level, and even international level competitions, right? Um, which is the most beautiful place you've seen in terms of visiting the place and in terms of your professional skating bit of it? Most beautiful place I've visited in terms of visiting the place is probably Colombia, South okay. America. 
I was there in the month of Feb and March. I was training for the World Championship. Lovely. The place is beautiful. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to express the way I was feeling when I was training there. Right. Those high altitude hill climbs, the climate, the food, the people. Oh, it was it was just you know heaven on earth. Lovely, lovely. So, what about the skating ring and everything? Like that was great too. Uh, the skating track, the best track. track I've skated on, is in Netherlands. So okay. it is below sea level, actually. Okay. Not really at the sea level. It's below sea level, so we have more oxygen content. So we are able to skate for much longer time and more efficiently, rather than okay. high altitude uh, places. So you are bringing the most out of your body, and you are able to perform at your, uh, you know. you're giving the most out of your body at that place right. there's no other place where you can do that so that is where i felt more powerful and i really like my performance there and the track is also beautiful so in terms of performance yes netherlands would be the okay place. lovely and uh, i wanted to know like how is the crowd when it comes to uh, the competition see in india most of them don't really know much about skating yeah only the people who come to watch their own kids or their relatives skate know about this they give or take 2 or 3% of the outside world coming in watching the you know skating championships but in other world championships and asian championships people come in herds you know okay they sell tickets outside the stands wow they buy tickets and they come and watch us skate so the uh the amount of crowd which we get in the international international events are right. way higher than what we get in india yeah that makes sense and it is it is it is just like you know how uh cricket and football and other other sports are played in india it's the same right. way played in the international arena right so basically you know, every... in most of the south american countries all of these kids and other people come to you and they take your autographs and they take photos of you and that is in itself a big motivation for us right so you have you've had uh, kids yeah, and people and come uh, take autographs from you oh yes we've had wow. we've had a lot of people come and take autographs or a lot of people take photos and not just in in the international arena right now in india the same thing is booming okay. and most of them have you know they they do show up to your races and they watch your races and they take autographs and they take photos they right. come and uh, stand next to you and ask you questions about how to do you know better in in terms of you know gaining performance or something like that so right. it's it's a very 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 blissful feeling beautiful beautiful like um i feel like when you said that people come and um, uh, get take autographs from you outside of the country right whenever you go outside to a different nation mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. like when you see the stars in india it's difficult for them to walk outside like in india in their local place right because they're so mm-hmm. like popular and people just rush to them and everything but i feel like you you get to yeah, enjoy yeah. both sides of things when you can walk freely outside oh yeah <laughs> and you still yes. have that fame popularity that that feeling and you get yes, both yes. of it i think that's the best yeah. part about uh where you are right now <laughs> Uh, you're a lefty, right? Oh yes, I am. Yes. Uh, yes. Does that is that any way an advantage when you're skating? Not really, because see, uh, we on skates are turning left always, just like how NASCAR goes on, hmm. just like how athletic goes on. So right. we're turning left. So when you're turning left, you have to lean towards your left. So hmm. me being a lefty, it is more of an advantage for me to lean left. But then. to turn left you need to have your right leg you know uh, you need to have more power in your right leg but for me it's the opposite i have my left leg as my power leg okay. so it is a disadvantage and an advantage both together so i can okay. lean much more easier but then to get the power out of it is a little bit difficult okay so i guess in that way i'm pretty even with most of the other skaters Now I want to know one thing is that you are now uh, officially India's fastest skater right how does it feel to be yes. the best nationwide and did you ever think this would happen was this your goal uh it was my goal see so when i start 
you know aiming for a goal as soon as i accomplish it immediately i aim for the next goal so i keep recycling the same thing so i keep pushing myself forward so my first goal was basically to get a national medal once i got the national medal that goal changed to a gold medal once i got the gold medal that changed to you no know, being in the indian team once that was happening i changed my goal to creating the or breaking the national record once that happened i want to become the national champion once that happened uh, i want to do it three times in a row <laughs> once that happened uh, that is when i started to feel that okay fine yes now i am india's fastest skater i can say that because i have not just proven once i have proven it many times and i can you know confidently say that yes i have done it's not like i'm just showing or saying i just did once or twice or thrice right. i have been doing it multiple times and in the events of what i do i am the fastest so i don't think there's a, any wrong thing in saying that i'm india's fastest skater in the events i do right so it is a good thing actually <laughs> i feel really good no i think i think that. you should be you should be proud and you should like you know keep your chin up in terms of saying yeah i am the best like it's you you get that and you get that it's it's not a bad attitude when it's true right so i feel like mm-hmm. i feel like it's yeah. a prestige moment where you can uh, you know keep your shoulders up and head high and uh, you know talk to people and say yes i am the best i am the fastest so like congratulations on that also um what did oh, your family you have so to say <laughs> i want to know what did your family have to say once uh, you know everyone like once you got that award that you know the title that was the india's fast <laughs> mom was happy mom was ecstatic she was like she was almost in tears she was like i've done it and all that and i'm like yeah i've done it and dad was like okay next goal what is it <laughs> asian medal i'm like yes okay <laughs> lovely so yeah dad has kind of been you know the uh, hard one but i mean that that's what pushes me that's good i think you have the best of it in that way not like be overconfident in what i do yeah the best yeah. balance i think i think that's uh, cuz you yeah. know dads dads are supposed to be like you know pushing you towards something more and while moms are like always oh yeah oh uh, right so yeah. i'll tell you one incident once when uh, i was i think 7 years old no i was yeah i was 8 years old okay so it was right before the national championship and um, previous year i had uh, overtaken this guy or i had beaten this guy last year and the next year where i was racing in chikmangalore this guy beat me by half an inch like not even half an inch. it was a photo finish they took about 2 hours to decide who the winner was wow my dad got so pissed off he tore my ear and i have a mark right here and wow. i'm not able to find the podium photo but i'm standing on the podium crying this whole my skin suit is completely filled with blood and the other first guy and the third guy are staring at me they're almost about to cry so wow. <laughs> in terms of being strict nobody can beat my dad <laughs> he wow. is like do it or you're going to get punched or you're going to get ripped and wow he proved it actually <laughs> like he he was a lifetime coach i think i think that's uh... Yes, yes. The best way to play. Yeah, so when I was a left I'm a lefty. So when I started skating, uh my first coach said I can't skate because you need to power your left leg. Sorry, right leg and you have a left leg power and it's difficult for you to skate. Right. My dad is like no, sports is equal to all irrespective of what he is or how he you know um if he is lefty or righty or left hand or right handed. So my dad took it up as a challenge. He got himself certified as a skating coach. I started his own academy and started experimenting on me to show that even I'm capable and he's capable of training other skaters much more efficiently than the other coaches in Bangalore. Fantastic. I mean he I'm he has gone way ahead of what I have achieved. I mean basically whatever he did is what I am right now. So right. I don't think there's any doubt that he gets angry when I lose or he gets angry when I don't perform. you know to my uh, potential it's like an equal effort right like cuz he's also putting in effort oh, yeah. to train you and coach you yes, yes, yes. to take you to the right direction so i think that yeah i mean i i see a lot of people uh, all the skaters i see in in our club yeah whatever the kid does is equally important as what the parent does 
because they wake up early they bring them and they wait for them for the kids to finish warming up and you know finish their workouts and finish their training they head back i mean even though they have work and they have other uh, commitments they make sure they are uh, they're there every day 6 o'clock 5:30 in the morning with their kid to make sure they are wow. you know training and they are winning in the competitions and they scream their lungs out when they are racing so the i mean i don't know how to say this but parents should be awarded for what they do even though their kids achieve so much right wonderful that's that's a very good point i think uh, people should understand how important the people are behind the scenes and uh, how much credit yeah. they actually deserve i'm so happy to hear this uh, this this big like family being together and uh, you know you guys are like <laughs> one big sports family like you guys are like your own team and oh yes yes and uh, that's that's just wonderful yeah like, uh, when i'm on track off track when i'm at home when i'm somewhere else the only thing we talk about is sports and skating and how we can improve and what we can do it's it's basic journey for us skating so wow. that is bound to happen and we are bound to improve on what we do and achieve so <laughs> it's it's a perk saying you know, my family is into skating and <laughs> that is that's just fantastic like what, is there any other uh, sport if it was not for skating was there if like for you would there have been any other sport um i was good high jump Okay. I was a uh, skate silver medalist in high jump during school days and college days. Uh I don't know. I was fond of archery and okay. rally sport. How tall are you? So if it not I'm 6 6 6 feet tall. Okay. Yes. So even swimming would have been a good idea, right? So Yeah, so I do all the sport basically. I mean, I was into basketball when I was in school and college. I was into volleyball, badminton. I was into all sports. Any sport you give to at me, outdoor sport, I was there. And my Lovely. friends used to hate me. My my schoolmen <laughs> used to hate me when I was in the, you know sports days. I used to win almost all the races, and they used to be like, "Dude, you win in the school and out the school. Just leave leave us some medals." They used to hate me. They used to bug me so much. <laughs> that shows how competi- how you are with the uh, you know competition i think uh, i think oh yes that's where you <laughs> I got i was very your... competitive i was very yeah. competitive in in school in college yeah i think that's where you got it from from playing so many sports so you're a professional inline skater a lot of people don't know the difference between rollerblades and inline skating you want to go ahead and highlight the difference yeah uh, so rollerblades are ones which you use for a hobby like you just wear them and go around they're made of plastic and they have these small small wheels and they're just for hobby and they're just for commuting you don't have you can't go professional in that if you wear those skates and go on a race track they will send you out immediately so professional inline skates are the boots are made of carbon the frames are made of aircraft grade aluminum and the bearings and the wheels are really high tech so the whole setup which i use costs around say 1 and 1/2 lakhs wow yeah. wonderful wow so that's professional going professional has to be you're going for the best if you're yeah. not then you're not winning see that's that's i'm i'm yeah. so happy i actually asked you that question because i didn't know that much of a difference all i thought like you know by the looks of it the design and maybe the aerodynamics of the the way how it's made i thought yeah. that would be the difference not really okay so there are three types of skates one is the tenacity ones where you find all these kids using it on the road with the metal frame yeah. and you know synthetic wheels yeah that is where we use them for beginners the next comes the quads which are two wheels in the front and two wheels in the back and then are the inlines which we use So I skated in quads from 2001 to 2011, and wow. from 2011 no sorry 2007. From 2007 to now, I've I've been using inline. Okay, so which is your favorite? Like, which one do you prefer? I prefer the quad. The quad? Why is that? Yeah, I was. I mean, not to boast myself, but I was a rocket. on quads 
Wow. I was like going for every move, going for every attack. I was to spare no one. But in inline, uh, yeah. So in 2007, I was affected with jaundice, typhoid, and paratyphoid all together. Oh my God! It was three days before the national championship. So it put wow. me down for about a year and a half. And to get back up to form, it took me another year and a half. So basically, I lost three years. Wow. That's... Honestly speaking, the form I was in 2007, I don't think I'll be in that shape ever again because I was like going for the national gold. Oh yeah, I yeah. was. Wow. I'm so sorry to hear that uh, back lag, but oh, I that's think, okay. <laughs> I think I think you're coming that's back okay. quickly, though. I think you're right now already the like, you know, you're just 25. Yeah. So <laughs> you have. I think I think you're so still. So in gonna... 2007, I had this, okay. and uh, from 2007 to 2011, I was struggling to get back to form. 2012 was my opening year. I won the first ever national gold medal after what? 11 years of skating. Wow. I've been consistently getting silvers and bronzes. So that is another lesson for me to never give up no matter what happens. It took me 11 years to get a from, you know, convert the silver into gold. Right. So 2012 I've got two gold medals from then on it has been golds all the way. Lovely, fantastic. I applaud and, you for your And the gold also <laughs> Yeah, and and the most uh, you know um I don't know how to say this but it made even sweeter because the gold I won was in Bangalore which where I live it was on the uh, home hometown hometown it made me it made even more sweeter so I think maybe it was you know my destiny to win at the home track maybe yeah. that what pushed me so long maybe maybe so was it the first gold you got was yeah. in Bangalore yes wow that's 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 wonderful that is fantastic I don't know man just just being another Bangalorean to know that you know you're from Bangalore and you you have <laughs> won gold and it I think it's incredible man I think I think it's oh, yeah. fantastic I mean winning on your home track yeah makes you know the the whole the whole scenario the whole celebration is different So um now that we know you are very competitive and you have participated in many competitions and championships right um which sports celebrity did you get to meet and which one like were you excited about the world champion um his in, name is Joey Montier he's from USA okay. okay uh he's won 52 world championship titles wow so wow yeah meeting him and talking to him about you know the same sport which i compete in was you know an eye opener for me would you say the way he put it sorry would you say that he was your idol as well oh uh, my idol yes he was lovely he was my idol initially and then i have two idols basically i had joy montia and another guy called gregory dugento from italy Okay. These two were animals on track. They used to attack and kill. So whatever I am and whatever I've learned, I've basically learned all of them from watching their videos and the races. Lovely. So speaking to both of them, you know, having a chat with them made me feel that I'm not far from the podium. Wow. You no, know, if I get everything right, if I do yeah. everything the way it's supposed to do, supposed to be done. I don't think it's it's far away. I'm sure they would have given you some advice as well. Oh yes, they gave me a lot of advice. They gave me a lot of they they told me to, you know, basically stick your head down when you want to win something and once you put your head down and you concentrate, you will definitely get it no matter what. Right. If you really want to do it, you will do it. And if you have the hunger, if you have the fire in the belly, then definitely you will go for it. Yeah. So you had that I've fire. been doing that. <laughs> I've done that last year also in the World Championships, basically World Roller Games. Uh, the track was to uh, my body type. Like I'm a sprinter and I'm very agile. Right. So I didn't need to put down a lot of power to accelerate. So okay. I did that, and I don't know. Out of nowhere, I'm just you know racing and coming back, doing my heats, coming back, doing my semis, coming up, coming back, and then. I finally see the chart and I want the fifth place. I'm like, damn. 
Yeah. <laughs> now I just knew something. From 13th in the previous year to 5th is a big leap and I don't think two more places should be a big problem. Yeah. I think I think so, it will be that soon. Oh yeah, I was gunning for it this year. Yeah. Uh, World Championship was happening in Colombia and I thought I'll go four months early start training with the world champions who are Colombian. Right. Learn their secrets maybe. <laughs> you know, how to outperform them. So, I was there and then the pandemic happened and I had to rush back to home country. Yeah, the pandemic has ruined it for everyone. I mean, um, Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. the worst thing that I think that uh, you know we're actually facing at this point. Even uh, even we're just working from home, you know. And most of the time oh, yeah. I, I find myself working more Yeah, uh, I mean, I think in that way you guys are lucky. You at least working. We're not able to go skate, we're not able to skate at home. Yeah. We're just sitting and exercising and keeping ourselves fit. So, right. we are used to lifting heavy weights. We are lifting, we are used to, you know, going to the weight room and you know, uh, smashing the squats and doing a lot of heavy weights. Right. And then from that to, you know, home workouts with just fitness, it brings your body to a point where, you know, you just give up and you're like not happening yeah. today. You're not that <laughs> motivated tomorrow. anymore. Yeah. 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 No, I think that's the same thing like in terms of for us as well like uh because right now I'm not able to put a a, a division between family and work. Um you know and I'm at oh, yeah. home and yeah, yeah. the line is blurred and 99.9% of the time I'm just mm-hmm. working. And it's it's in a way it's okay, it's good cuz I like yeah. what I do but on the other hand I don't get time with the family so that's kind of that's yeah, the only problem. But other than that I think it's pretty chill. And I think you might be following like a diet or a nutrition plan, right? Uh, so yeah, coming to my diet, I have uh, a huge metabolic rate. Wow, lucky. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, this, most of them hate me for that. So right. I just gulp down whatever I get. So I think I think if you I put up it, videos it. of you eating the whole day I think everyone like a lot of people will start hating you even more <laughs> like they'll be like no I'm oh, not yes, going to yes. deal with this guy a lot of people a lot of people do <laughs> yeah, a lot of the, I've seen a lot of videos like that sometimes my food. own mother sometimes my own mom screws me she's like how much do you eat man just stop <laughs> it i can't cook for you anymore and i'm like ma <laughs> i'm <laughs> hungry <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now you're 25 um what are your future goals and like do you have any advice for the young young aspirants like your students or anyone yeah yeah um future goals probably getting on the podium in the asian and the world level but right. need badly need um you no know, a silver or a gold in asian because i already have three bronze right. i need to convert them to silver and gold and uh, i don't want to stop just here in the world championship rankings I've come fifth I think just two, two more places shouldn't be a big problem right. or a big task I mean it is a big thing you know to say but um, I think if I work hard and you know keep what do what I'm doing I think I'll be there so until I do that probably I'll just keep going on and then right. um, I have already planned to set up uh, an international academy for skating wow. just for professional skating in bangalore uh, we are already coming up with the track with all the infrastructure specifications love so once that happens we'll be starting to train people at the professional level wonderful so i want to guide people who also have the same ambitions to you know uh, put them in the right platform of where they should be right you know all the all the sacrifices i had to do and all the problems i had to face i want to eliminate all of them to the younger generation so they have more time concentrating on winning and performing better than rather than you know the other uh, stuff that goes on fantastic i think uh, i think you're going to make it i really do believe it um and i'm i'm on your team so like you know let me know when it's happening and if there's any way where i can watch it i'd love to yes watch. it's it's almost constructed it's almost done we are we're doing a few testing uh, just the final stage is going on i'd love to so visit once the it's place. done yeah. give you a buzz yes please do for sure for sure now probably you can do a few laps i'll teach you how to skate that's yes, also we can do <laughs> i i'm very scared of uh, skating to be honest like 
I I tried it when I was young and I fell too many times and then I was just mm-hmm. like I don't know but then I haven't tried after that uh, I've tried ice skating and I think that was the one that actually scared me the most because it's ice skating and if you just Oh yeah ice skating ice, hurts a lot ice skating yeah, hurts a it lot hurts. because yeah. it's it's hard ice and you hit the bone and yeah oh that's bad cold, you get numb and numb. you initially don't feel the pain but after a while it starts, it starts feeling yeah. you so <laughs> that's the that's the worst part uh like I've been there <laughs> yeah I've, I've been, been there, there. Oh that's the reason why I'm kind of like a little scared but yeah dude like if 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 there's no age age gap or age limit for this then I'd love to uh come in and try and there's no age gap to learn anything you that's just true. have to have a you just have to have a good teacher that's true that's true Yeah. like I, i think i think that's perfect cuz you know you're just indirectly <laughs> saying that your dad is great too <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is <laughs> lovely okay so we're going to do this one um one segment that i like to call what's in the picture okay uh okay. now this mm-hmm. this with this uh the basic thing is that i'm going to show you a picture that i've uh, basically stalked you on instagram okay mm-hmm. So I'm going to show you a picture and you're going to tell oh, me okay. <laughs> yeah they're going to tell me the history and the story behind this picture. The story is enough you don't have okay. to tell the history but just tell me about the picture right? Can you see this? Okay. Oh okay yes I do. This yes, is do. what is this? This is your tattoo. Yes it is. Tell me about this uh epic art i really like this i'm a sucker for tattoos i love tattoos yeah uh, okay but oh, i need okay. to know yeah um um so the story goes like i told you i'm a big big fan of eagles right so the first art on top right here is the eagle and yeah. below that is the lion lion so the story of the eagle and the lion is the eagle of the king is the eagle is the king of the skies right the lion is the king of the jungle, the jungle. and i want to be the king of this the track right so lovely this is the this has true meaning this has like when you get yeah. a tattoo and the have... big red thing on top yeah <laughs> yeah and the big red thing on top is actually a work in progress yes it's a work okay. in progress so it's going to convert to a half arm sleeve maybe so okay looking at other designs and you know maybe in future let's hope lovely this is fantastic i really who is your tattoo artist oh uh, he's actually my uh, uh, college uh, college mate he's my college senior okay his name is uh, nishant cm he has his own tattoo studio in shankar mart okay near basishan nagar right Yeah. so i just uh, you know spoke to him about this idea and he's like okay fine give me a few hours and then he sent me this you know basic rough the design and um, he had done one of these geometric wolf designs where it's half yeah. geometric and half realistic so i thought people have done wolves why can't they do i mean why yeah, would it would look good on lions right. he said lion would definitely look good because it has a mane and all the geometric yeah. designs will come up really good Yeah. Said okay, let's do it. I spoke to him in the evening. The next day morning, I showed up and started working on it. Right. And yeah, I, it took about four hours. We this had took uh, four, four hours sessions. This, this yeah. So one hours? one session each. It took four hours. Yeah, wow. the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. This is incredible art, man. Like. <laughs> yeah. Tell him, tell him, give him, give him some props from my side. Like I think he's, he's great. Yes, I will, will do. Yeah. Will do. Uh, what did the family say? Did they say anything about uh, getting a tattoo? <laughs> I didn't tell them. I didn't tell them in in the initial stages. <laughs> so I said, you know, I was just hiding it for a few few weeks. How do you hide and a tattoo so big? Dad jumps out of nowhere. I, I wear t-shirts around the house, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So. I mean people are bound to you know yeah no but I tried my best to hide it but I was unsuccessful dad was like what the hell is that mark I'm like no it's just temporary I'm I'm just trying you know when you design something it's a spray on type of thing right. so I'm like okay and we'll see how long it stays and I I'm <laughs> like okay fine this guy knows there's no point you know <laughs> right, right. Him, like it's it's a tattoo so how long how long did like, you what is this how long did you manage to keep it away from you 
Oh, um, for about eight, eight days, eight, nine days. Yeah. Uh, that, makes half, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not not yeah, if you had said anything like eight to nine months, I would not have believed it. <laughs> oh no way! No way! Right? Okay, let's go to the next picture. The Continental GT. Oh, yeah. Seems like uh, the you know inline skates is not the only wheels that you like. Like, are you a biker too? I basically love anything with wheels. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I I follow Formula One and I follow MotoGP and I follow World Rally Cross and mostly there's a lot of motorsports event. So you give me anything with with wheels, I I will definitely like it. Right. So this this picture was what? Like this was you on a solo ride or something? Uh, no. It was actually we were heading to my friend's farmhouse, and this was his road towards the farmhouse, and it was a beautiful. Road where Nizi Trees was growing on the either side, and I just like, you know what? Just stop. You can take yeah. a photo, and then it's a fantastic picture. Was... You took this picture? Yes, I did. It looks like you have great photography. I took it on the well. phone. I took it on the phone, not a professional camera or something like that. Wow, this is uh, this is fantastic. All right, let's go to the next one. So you're pretty sporty, man. Like, um, you do scuba diving too? Oh, this was in uh, <laughs> 2015, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I did a solo trip to Pondi. Wow. Not a trip as such. Uh, the Pondicherry national team called me for a training camp. Okay. So I was in Pondi for nine days to wow. train the Pondicherry team. Uh. and i had been there alone i went okay. by myself i finished the training and then i thought okay fine let's cool off for a bit so i found a local uh, scuba instructor there and he is like let's go let's go let's do it tomorrow let's go okay, fine let's do it and the next day we were you know under the ocean and it was Lovely. a good time actually we had clear waters right right that's um, yeah. so i i have been scuba diving once and uh, they had told me that i'll have a challenge because of my beard so like the water would get into <laughs> my um, nose all the time and i used to yeah like, your yeah. mm-hmm. the like the small holes will be there and stuff like the air know, bubbles yeah air it bubbles. fills into your mask so yeah yeah so i panicked a couple of times in the beginning and then later i realized <laughs> it's because of okay. this so i managed to figure it out mm-hmm. myself but yeah yeah i i panicked too for the first time when i saw these bigger fishes coming up and crawling up yeah. below the surface as like Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Too close to comfort. Let's go. Let's go on top. Let's let's just go back to surface. Lovely, lovely. If you could just skate in the water, that would be cool too, right? Ah, I don't think so because we wouldn't be as fast as we would be. Of course, of course. Nah, I know, I know. I was just saying. Ah, tell me, tell me. I think a lot of them would want to hear about this. So, tell me, what do you? What is this about? In China, right? Oh, this was in China in 2016. Right. It was in 2016 when uh, the senior Indian team won the first medal for the country in the Asian Championship. Right. It was a very very prestigious moment because nobody had done it before, and right. the three me, Vikram Engle, and Nikhil Shabani were the three topmost skaters of the nation, and. We prove that you know we are Asia's third fastest for the first time. Lovely. And it was a very big thing for us because nobody had done it before. Now I think just by holding, yeah, the first I think time, just you guys holding the flag up like this is such a proud moment. Yeah, it was the first time Indian flag was on a podium. So it was. I mean, tears did roll down when we saw the flag go up. Yeah. Was. It was a very, very, very good moment. It was a very memorable moment. <laughs> right, it's, it's just giving me goosebumps right now. Just thinking about how <laughs> how that experience yeah, would have yeah. been for you. Wonderful. I, so yeah, yeah I think special. Yeah, it definitely. And we won two medals, not just one. We won two medals for that. That's India. even better. <laughs> so that made even more sweeter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
the more the merrier <laughs> yeah of course that's true that's true yeah. i think that's it for today so i want to thank you for uh, being a uh, part of this uh, podcast this thank is uh, you. thank you for getting in touch with me and wanting to do this i was more than honored to do it yeah. i want to say is that you know no matter who it is or no matter what he is doing always always give them the support that will make them achieve much more than what they're capable of and um, you just you just went beyond the voice with me dhanush